Kingship and Sacrifice, the Climax of Messianic Fulfillment. Introduction, Messianic Prophecies. In this session, we explore the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem in the pivotal events of Passion Week. We revisit the question, can you trust God? That has been asked since Genesis and traced how Jesus rectified Adam's failure. This session also delves into the institution of the Eucharist and the significance of the resurrection, culminating the period of the Messianic fulfillment. Kingship theme fulfilled. Jesus' royal identity. Luke subtly highlights Jesus' royal identity, beginning with John the Baptist's question, Luke 3, verses 15 to 16, and the enthronement language of Psalm 2, verse 7. Luke 3 also, verse 22. The Davidic genealogy, Luke 3, verses 23 to 38, reinforces this, along with Jesus' refusal of Satan's offer of earthly kingship during the temptation. Restoration of God's Rule The Proto-Evangelium in Genesis 3, verse 15, it speaks of restoring God's rule through a promised seed, later reaffirmed in the covenant with Abraham. This establishes a divine plan for redemption. God's rule through David's throne. Initially, Israel was theocracy with God as their king. Eventually, the people demanded a human king, which God granted while maintaining his reign through David's throne. This arrangement prefigured the ultimate fulfillment in Christ. Fulfillment in Christ. This prophecies find their fulfillment in Christ, who is acknowledged as King of Kings in Revelation. His kingdom manifests through the church, the privilege, the privilege place of God's reign. Lamb theme fulfilled. Provision of the Lamb. In Genesis 22, verse 8, Abraham tells Isaac that God will provide a lamb for the offering, foreshadowing the ultimate provision of Jesus as the lamb for Israel. The Passover Lamb Exodus 12 verse 3 describes the Passover Lamb whose blood on the doorpost signaled the angel of death to pass over Israelite homes. This prefigures Christ's sacrificial death. Jesus as the Lamb of God In John 1 verse 29, Jesus is identified as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This parallels the Passover narrative emphasizing salvation through the blood of the Lamb. The Suffering Servant in the Way of Peace The Suffering Servant The servant's suffering as described in Isaiah paves the way for peace between God and humanity. He bore our, our iniquities and through his wounds we are healed. Jesus' triumphal entry. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, Luke chapter 19 verses 28 to 40 or Matthew chapter 21, is marked by public acclaim and symbolism of kingship. Yet he rides a donkey symbolizing peace rather than war. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, Luke 19 verses 41 to 44. Lamenting their failure to recognize what makes for peace, his sorrow underscores the impending judgment due to their unbelief. The Passover, the Last Supper, Preparations for the Passover Luke 22, verses 7 to 13, details the preparations for the Passover, emphasizing Jesus' foreknowledge and the symbolic act of a man carrying a water jar leading to the upper room. The Last Supper during the Last Supper, Luke 22, verses 14 to 20, Jesus institutes the Eucharist, commanding his disciples to do this in remembrance of me. This sacramental act is a perpetual memorial of his sacrifice. The New David Jesus fulfills the role of the New David, leading a new exodus and establishing a new covenant. The Toda, Thanksgiving, sacrifice in the Old Testament prefigures the Eucharistic celebration. Christ's Passion and Resurrection The Garden of Gethsemane 
In Luke 22, verses 39 to 46, Jesus prays in testimony, expressing submission to God's will. This contrasts with Adam's disobedience in Eden, highlighting Jesus' obedience and sacrificial love, accusations, and crucifixion. Jesus faces false accusations, Luke uh, chapter 23, verse 2, and is crucified, taking on the curse of Adam. The crown of thorns symbolizes the curse of sin that Jesus bore for humanity's redemption. The resurrection, the empty tomb, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12, and Jesus' appearances to his disciples affirm his victory over death. The resurrection is the cornerstone of Christian faith, signifying the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies and the establishment of the New Covenant. Conclusion Why did Jesus die? Jesus died to offer humanity the power of resurrection and eternal life. His death invites us to join His body, the Church, and participate in His redemptive work. We are also called to live in the freedom and grace of His resurrection, united as one body with Christ as our head. Messianic Fulfillment Redemption In this session, we explore the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and the pivotal events of Passion Week. We revisit the question, Can you trust God? that has been asked since Genesis and traced how Jesus rectified Adam's failure. This session also delves into the institution of the Eucharist and the significance of the resurrection culminating the period of the Messianic fulfillment. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem The triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem marks the beginning of Passion Week, a series of events leading to His crucifixion and resurrection. This entry is a dramatic fulfillment of Zechariah 9, verse 9, where the prophet describes the coming king riding on a donkey, symbolizing peace and humility. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the crowds greeted him with shouts of Hosanna and laid down palm branches and cloaks, acknowledging him as the awaited Messiah. These acts symbolically recognized Jesus' kingship contrasting the expectations of a militant Messiah who would overthrow Roman rule. The question of trust in God From Genesis to Revelation, the question of trusting God has been central to the biblical narrative. In Genesis, Adam and Eve's lack of trust led to the fall, bringing sin and death into the world. Throughout the Old Testament, God continually calls His people to tr trust in His promises and His plan for redemption. The ultimate test of trust culminates in Jesus' Passion Week. Jesus, the second Adam, fully trusts in God's will, even unto death, thereby rectifying Adam's failure. His obedience and trust in God's plan bring about the possibility of redemption and eternal life for all humanity. Kingship theme fulfilled. Jesus' royal identity. The Gospel of Luke discreetly introduces elements of Jesus' royal identity, beginning with the ministry of John the Baptist. In Luke 3, verses 15 to 16, John the Baptist acknowledges that he is not the Messiah, but one who is mightier is coming. This sets the stage for Jesus' baptism, where the heavens open and a voice declares, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Luke 3, verse 22. This echoes the enthronement language of Psalm 2, verse 7, affirming Jesus' divine sonship and royal identity. Furthermore, Luke's genealogy of Jesus, Luke 3, verses 23 to 38, traces his lineage back to David and ultimately to Adam, underscoring his rightful place in the Davidic line. The temptation narrative in Luke 4 verses 1 to 13 reveals Jesus' kingship. Satan offers Jesus all the kingdoms of the world if he would worship him. But Jesus rejects this offer, demonstrating his commitment to God's kingdom rather than earthly power. Restoration of God's rule. The concept of God's rule being restored is first introduced in Genesis 3 verse 15, known as the Protoevangelium where God promises that the offspring of the woman will crush the serpent's head. 
This promise points to the ultimate victory over sin and death through Jesus Christ. This promise is reaffirmed in God's covenant with Abraham where God promises to make Abraham's descendants a great nation through whom all nations will be blessed. Genesis 12 verse 2 to 3 God's rule through David's throne Initially, Israel was a theocracy with God himself as their king. However, the people demanded a human king and God granted their request beginning with Saul and subsequently David. Despite human kingship, God maintained his sovereign rule through the Davidic throne. The promise to David in 2 Samuel verses, chapter 7 verse 16 that his house and kingdom would endure forever finds its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ. Fulfillment in Christ These prophecies and promises find their fulfillment in Jesus Christ who is acknowledged as the King of Kings in Revelation 19, verse 16. His kingdom is not of this world, but may manifest through the church, the body of Christ. The church becomes the privileged place where God's reign is evident, fulfilling the divine plan for redemption and the restoration of God's rule. Lamb theme fulfilled. Provision of the Lamb. The theme of the Lamb is central in both the Old and New Testaments. In Genesis 22 verse 8, Abraham tells Isaac that God will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. This statement foreshadows the ultimate provision of Jesus as the Lamb of God. As the story of Abraham and Isaac unfolds, God indeed provides a ram, symbolizing his provision and point to the future sacrifice of Christ. The Passover Lamb In Exodus 12 verse 3, God instructs the Israelite to take a lamb for his household as part of the Passover celebration. The blood of the lamb placed on the doorpost serves as a sign for the angel of death to pass over the homes of the Israelites, sparing them from the final plague. This act of deliverance becomes a central memory for Israel, commemorated annually in the Passover feasts. The Passover lamb prefigures Jesus whose sacrificial death, death delivers humanity from the bondage of sin. Jesus as the Lamb of God John the Baptist identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1 verse 29 This declaration encapsulates the culmination of the Lamb theme linking Jesus' sacrificial death with the Passover Lamb. Jesus' blood shed on the cross brings about a new covenant and ultimate deliverance from sin and death. The Suffering Servant and the Way of Peace The Suffering Servant The prophecy of the Suffering Servant in Isaiah 53 describes one who bears the iniquities of many suffering on behalf of others. This servant's suffering leads to peace and healing for those he represents. Jesus embodies this Suffering Servant taking on the sins of the world and providing a way for reconciliation with God. Jesus' Triumphal Entry Jesus' entry into Jerusalem is marked by public acclaim and symbolic acts of kingship. The people lay down palm branches and cloaks, shouting Hosanna and recognizing him as the awaited Messiah. However, Jesus rides a donkey, fulfilling Zechariah 9 verse 9 and symbolizing peace rather than a militant overthrow of Roman rule. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. In Luke 19 verses 41 to 44, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, lamenting their failure to recognize what makes for peace. His sorrow reflects the city's impending judgment due to their unbelief and rejection of God's visitation. This moment underscores the depth of Jesus' compassion and his desire for their salvation. The Passover and the Last Supper Preparations for the Passover The preparations for the Passover meal, as described in Luke 22, verses 7 to 13, highlights Jesus' foreknowledge and the symbolic significance of the event. The disciples follow Jesus' instructions, leading them to an upper room where they prepared the meal. The Last Supper During the Last Supper, 
Luke 22, verses 14 to 20, Jesus institutes the Eucharist, transforming the Passover meal into a new covenantal act. He takes bread, gives thanks, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Similarly, he takes the cup, signifying the new covenant in his blood. This sacramental act is a perpetual memorial of his sacrificial death and a means of grace for believers. The New David Jesus fulfills the role of the New David, leading a new exodus and establishing a new covenant. The Toda, Thanksgiving, sacrifice in the Old Testament prefigures the Eucharistic celebration. The Eucharist becomes the ultimate expression of Thanksgiving, commemorating Jesus' sacrificial love and offering a means of participating in His divine life. Christ's Passion and Resurrection The Garden of Gethsemane In Luke 22, verses 39-46, to Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, expressing His submission to God's will. This sin contrasts with Adam's disobedience in Eden, highlighting Jesus' obedience and sacrificial love. Despite the agony and anticipation of, su of suffering, Jesus surrenders to the Father's will exemplifying perfect trust and obedience. Accusations and Crucifixion Jesus faces false accusations, Luke 23 verse 2, and is sentenced to crucifixion. The crown of thorns placed on his head symbolizes the curse of sin that he bears for humanity's redemption. Jesus' crucifixion is the ultimate act of sacrificial love fulfilling the prophecies and bringing about the possibility of salvation for all. The Resurrection The resurrection of Jesus is the cornerstone of Christian faith. The empty tomb, Luke 24 verses 1 to 12, and Jesus' appearances to his disciples affirm his victory over death and the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies. The resurrection signifies the establishment of the new covenant and the inauguration of God's kingdom. The Road to Emmaus In the story of the Road to Emmaus, Luke 24 verses 13 to 35, Jesus explains the fulfillment of the scriptures concerning himself to the perplexed disciples. They recognized him in the breaking of the bread, symbolizing the Eucharist where Jesus is present in a special way. This encounter highlights the continuity between the Old Testament prophecies and their fulfillment in Christ. Conclusion Why did Jesus die? Jesus died to offer humanity the power of resurrection and eternal life. His death invites us to join His body, the Church, and participate in His redemptive work. We are called to live in the freedom and grace of His resurrection, united as one body with Christ as our head. Through His death and resurrection, Jesus conquers sin and death, offering us the promise of eternal life and the hope of participating in His divine life. The Significance of the Eucharist Adonai Jury God provides Provision of the Lamb Abraham and Isaac a foreshadowing In Genesis 22 verse 8, Abraham's statement to his son Isaac, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. It's a profound foreshadowing of the ultimate sacrifice God would make through Jesus Christ. This narrative known as the Akida or the binding of Isaac is a pivotal moment in the Old Testament that prefigures the sacrificial death of Jesus. Abraham's unwavering faith and obedience to God are tested when he is commanded to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering. Despite the emotional turmoil, Abraham proceeds with a journey to Mount Moriah, trusting in God's provision. This trust is ultimately rewarded when, at the last moment, God intervenes and provides a ram caught in a thicket to be sacrificed in place of Isaac. This substitutionary sacrifice prefigures the substitutionary atonement that Jesus, the Lamb of God, would provide for humanity. Symbolism and Significance The symbolism of this event is rich and multi-layered. Isaac, as the beloved son, represents Jesus, the beloved son of God. 
The ram caught in the thicket represents Jesus, who is crowned with thorns. Just as the ram is offered in place of Isaac, Jesus is offered in place of humanity, bearing the sins of the world. This narrative establishes the concept of substitutionary sacrifice, a theme that runs throughout the Bible and finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ. Abraham's declaration, God will provide, becomes a prophetic statement pointing to the ultimate provision of Jesus as a sacrificial lamb. This theme of divine provision underscores God's grace and mercy, highlighting that salvation is not achieved through human efforts but through God's intervention and sacrifice. The Passover Lamb The institution of Passover Exodus 12 verse 3 details God's instructions to Moses and Aaron regarding the institution of the Passover, a foundational event in the history of Israel. The Israelites are instructed to take a lamb for each household, which will, which will be sacrificed, and its blood will be applied to the doorposts and lintels of their homes. This blood serves as a sign for the angel of death to pass over their homes during the final plague in Egypt, sparing the firstborn son of Israel. This event marks the beginning of Israel's deliverance from Egyptian bondage and becomes a central ritual in Jewish religious life, commemorated annually as a reminder of God's saving power and faithfulness. The Passover lamb, therefore, is not only a symbol of physical deliverance but also a precursor to the spiritual deliverance that Jesus would bring. The lamb as a symbol of salvation. The Passover lamb is rich with symbolic meaning. It had to be a year-old male without blemish signifying purity and perfection. This requirement points to Jesus who is without sin and the perfect sacrifice. The blood of the lamb applied to the doorposts signifies protection and deliverance from death. Just as the blood of Jesus shed on the cross delivers believers from a spiritual death and grants eternal life. The act of eating the lamb during the Passover meal also has significant implications. It symbolizes the incorporation of the sacrificial victim into the lives of the believers, prefiguring the Eucharist in which Christians partake of the body and blood of Christ, uniting themselves with the sacrifice. Jesus as the fulfillment of Passover Jesus' crucifixion during the Passover festival is not coincidental but deeply significant. He is the true Passover lamb whose blood protects believers from the ultimate judgment of sin. The New Testament writers, especially Paul, make this connection explicit. In 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, Paul writes, For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. This identification of Jesus with the Passover lamb underscores the continuity of God's redemptive plan from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. The parallel between the Passover lamb and Jesus is further emphasized during the Last Supper, where Jesus transforms the Passover meal into the institution of the Eucharist. By declaring the bread as his body and the wine as his blood, Jesus interprets the Passover symbols to represent his impending sacrificial death, thereby establishing a new covenant with his followers. Jesus as the Lamb of God John the Baptist's Declaration In John 1 verse 29, John the Baptist's proclamation, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, identifies Jesus as the fulfillment of the sacrificial lamb, motive that runs throughout the Old Testament. This title encapsulates Jesus' mission and the essence of his sacrificial death. John's declaration serves multiple purposes. It connects Jesus to the Passover lamb whose blood brings deliverance. It also links him to the suffering servant of Isaiah 53 who bears the iniquities of many and is led like a lamb to the slaughter. By using this title, John emphasizes Jesus' role in God's redemptive plan and sets a stage for his sacrificial death. The Lamb of God in the New Testament The image of Jesus as the Lamb of God is central to the New Testament, 
understanding of atonement and redemption. In Revelation, the Lamb imagery reaches its climax. Jesus is depicted as the Lamb who was slain, but now reigns victorious. Revelation 5 verses 6 to 14 presents the vision of the heavenly throne room where the Lamb is worshipped by all of creation, signifying His worthiness and completeness of His sacrificial work. The Lamb's victory over sin and death is further depicted in Revelation 7 verses 9 to 17, where a great multitude from every nation stands before the throne and the Lamb, clothed in white robes and holding palm branches. This sin symbolizes the ultimate triumph of God's plan of salvation with the Lamb at the center of worship and adoration. Salvation through the blood of the Lamb The theme of salvation through the blood of the Lamb is a recurring motif in the New Testament. Hebrews 9 verses 12 to 14 contrasts the blood of animals with the superior sacrifice of Jesus whose blood purifies the conscience from dead works to serve the living God. This sacrificial blood establishes a new and eternal covenant providing complete and lasting redemption. The Apostle Peter also emphasizes the preciousness of Christ's blood, describing it as a lamb without blemish or defect. 1 Peter 1 verses 18-19 to This imagery reinforces the idea that Jesus' sacrifice is perfect and sufficient for the atonement of sins, fulfilling the requirements of the Old Testament sacrificial system and surpassing it. The Eucharistic Celebration The Eucharist, instituted by Jesus at the Last Supper, is the liturgical expression of Jesus as the Lamb of God. During the celebration of the Eucharist, believers partake in the body and blood of Christ, commemorating His sacrificial death and participating in the New Covenant. This sacrament encapsulates the entire redemptive act of Christ, making present the once-for-all sacrifice in a tangible and mystical way. The Eucharist also serves as a reminder of the eschatological banquet, the marriage supper of the Lamb, described in Revelation 18 verse 9. This future event represents the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan where believers will join in eternal communication with Christ, the Lamb who has tri triumphed over sin and death. The transformative power of the Lamb sacrifice. The sacrifice of the Lamb of God has transformative power for believers. It not only provides forgiveness of sins, but also initiates a process of sanctification and renewal. The Lamb sacrifice Sacrifice calls believers to a life of holiness, reflecting the purity and self-giving love of Christ. Paul, in Romans 12 verse 1, urges believers to offer their bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This exhortation is rooted in the understanding that through Christ's sacrifice, believers are called to live sacrificially, embodying the values of the kingdom of God. The Universal Scope of the Lamb Sacrifice The declaration that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world emphasizes the universal scope of His redemptive work. Jesus' sacrifice is not limited to a particular group but is offered for all humanity. This universal dimension is reflected in the Great Commission where Jesus commands his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that he has commanded. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20 The universal scope of Jesus' sacrifice also highlights the inclusive nature of the kingdom of God. The lamb sacrifice breaks down barriers of ethnicity, social status, and gender, creating a new community united in Christ. This inclusivity is celebrated in the vision of the heavenly worship in Revelation, where people from every tribe, language, and nation are gathered before the throne and the Lamb. Conclusion The theme of the Lamb is intricately woven in the fabric of the Bible, culminating in the person and work of Jesus Christ. From the provision of the lamb in Abraham's narrative to the Passover lamb in Exodus and ultimately to Jesus as the lamb of God, this motif underscores God's redemptive plan 
and His provision for humanity's salvation. Jesus' sacrificial death as the Lamb of God fulfills the Old Testament prophecies and rituals, establishing a new covenant and offering salvation to all who believe. The Eucharist, as the liturgical celebration of the sacrifice, continually reminds believers of the transformative power and universal scope of Jesus' redemptive work. Through His sacrifice, Jesus not only takes away the sin of the world, but also calls believers to a life of holiness and sacrificial love, embodying the values of His kingdom and participating in His mission to redeem the world. Messianic Fulfillment The Suffering Servant and the Way of Peace The Suffering Servant The Prophecy of Isaiah The concept of the Suffering Servant is profoundly articulated in the book of Isaiah, particularly in chapters 52 and 53. Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5, describes the servant as one who bore our gifts and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the judgment that brought us peace, and with, with his wounds we are healed. This passage highlights the servant's role in bearing the sins and sufferings of others, providing a pathway to peace and reconciliation between God and humanity. The suffering servant motif is a vivid portrayal of the courage suffering where one suffers on behalf of others. This servant, though innocent, willingly takes upon himself the punishment that was due to others, ultimately bringing healing and restoration. The imagery of the servant being pierced and crushed underscores the depth of his suffering while the resulting peace and healing point to the transformative power of his sacrifice. Jesus as the Fulfillment of the Suffering Servant Jesus Christ is identified as the ultimate fulfillment of the suffering servant throughout the New Testament. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are seen as the realization of Isaiah's prophecy. In Matthew 8 verse 17, the evangelist directly connects Jesus' healing ministry to Isaiah 53 verse 4, stating, This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Jesus' passion and crucifixion vividly embodied the suffering servant's role. He is betrayed, mocked, beaten, and ultimately crucified, bearing the physical and emotional torment that was meant for humanity. His cry of abandonment on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27 verse 46 echoes the depth of his suffering and the weight of sin he carried. Through his wounds, believers find healing, and through his death, they find life. The impact of the servant's suffering. The suffering servant's sacrifice has profound theological implications. It highlights the seriousness of sin and the extent of God's love. Sin requires atonement, and through the servant's suffering, God's justice is satisfied and his mercy is extended. The servant's suffering also demonstrates the cost of redemption, illustrating the peace with God comes at a great price. Moreover, the servant's suffering provides a model for Christian discipleship. Believers are called to follow in the footsteps of the suffering servant, embracing a life of sacrificial love and service. In Philippians 2 verses 5 to 8, Paul exhorts believers to have the same mindset as Christ, who humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. This call to self-giving, love, and humility is central to the Christian faith. His triumphal entry, the event of the triumphal entry. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, recorded in Luke 19 verses 28 to 40 and Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11, marks the beginning of Passion Week and is a pivotal event in the Gospel. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, he sent two disciples to pass a donkey and a colt, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, 
O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. As Jesus rode into the city, crowds gathered, laying their cloaks and palm branches on the road, and shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. This acclamation recognized Jesus as the Messiah and King, yet the choice of a donkey symbolized peace rather than military conquest. Symbolism and Significance the triumphal entry is reached with, with symbolical meaning. By riding a donkey, Jesus intentionally subverted the expectations of a militant Messiah who would overthrow Roman rule through force. Instead, he presented himself as a king of peace, fulfilling the prophetic vision of a humble and gentle ruler. This act challenged the prevailing notions of power and authority emphasizing that God's kingdom operates on principles of humility and peace. The crowd shouts of Hosanna, a, he a Hebrew term meaning save us, reflect their hopes for deliverance. However, their understanding of salvation was largely political and nationalistic, focused on liberation from Roman oppression. Jesus' entry, while affirming his messianic identity, also redefined the nature of his mission, highlighting that his kingdom was not of this world and that his deliverance was spiritual and eternal. The Response of the Religious Leaders The triumphal entry also elicited a response from the religious leaders who, left, who felt threatened by Jesus' growing popularity and the public's recognition of him as the Messiah. In Luke 19, verses 39-40, some Pharisees and the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus replied, I tell you, if this were silent, the very stones would cry out. This exchange underscores the inevitability of Jesus' messianic mission and the futility of human opposition to God's plan. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Jesus laments for Jerusalem. Immediately, following his triumphal entry, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, Luke 19, verses 41 to 44. As he approached the city and saw it, he lamented, If you, even you, had only known on this day what you bring for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you. You know, never said, they will dash you to the ground. You and the children within your walls, they will not leave one stone on another because you do not recognize the time of God's coming to you. This moment reveals the depth of Jesus' compassion and the sorrow over the city's impending judgment. And despite the public's acclamation and the apparent acceptance of his kingship, Jesus knows that the same city will soon reject and crucify him. His tears reflect the tragedy of missed opportunity and the consequences of unbelief. The impending judgment. Jesus' lament also prophesies the destruction of Jerusalem, which historically occurred in AD 70 when the Roman armies besieged and destroyed the city. His prediction of enemies building an embankment in the city's complete Devastation underscores the severity of the judgment that would befall Jerusalem due to its rejection and God's visitation. The praise, the things that make for peace, highlights the city's failure to recognize the true path to peace, which lies in accepting Jesus as the Messiah and embracing his message of repentance and reconciliation. Instead, Jerusalem clung to a misguided vision of peace, rooted in political liberation and nationalistic fervor. The Way of Peace Jesus' entry and subsequent lament over Jerusalem emphasized the way of peace that he embodied and proclaimed. Unlike the militaristic messiahs and revolutionary leaders of this time, Jesus offered a path of nonviolence, forgiveness, and reconciliation. His kingdom was established not through force, but through sacrificial love and self-giving. 
in Matthew 5 verse 9, Jesus taught, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. This beatitude encapsulates the essence of Jesus' mission and the calling of his followers. The way of peace involves not only the absence of conflict, but also the presence of justice, mercy, and compassion. It requires a radical reorientation of values where humility and service replace power and domination. The call to recognize God's visitation. Jesus' lament over Jerusalem serves, serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of recognizing and responding to God's visitation. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus' ministry is depicted as the fulfillment of God's promises and the manifestation of His kingdom. Yet, despite the signs and wonders, many failed to see and accept Him. This call to recognize God's visitation extends to all believers. It challenges us to be attentive to God's presence and activity in our lives and the world around us. It invites us to respond with faith, repentance, and obedience, embracing the way of peace that Jesus embodied. Conclusion The theme of the suffering servant and the way of peace is central to the Christian faith. The suffering servant, as described in, in, in Isaiah, finds its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ, whose sacrificial death brings healing and reconciliation between God and humanity. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, marked by humility and peace, redefines messianic expectations and emphasizes the nature of His kingdom. His lament over Jerusalem underscores the tragedy of missed opportunities and the consequences of unbelief, while also highlighting the call to embrace the way of peace. As followers of Christ, we are invited to reflect on the significance of these events and to align our lives with the principles of humility, sacrificial love, and peacemaking. By doing so, we participate in the ongoing work of God's kingdom, bearing witness to the transformative power of the suffering servant and the way of peace that leads to true reconciliation and eternal life. The sacrifice, the Passover, and the Last Supper. Preparations for the Passover. Jesus' foreknowledge and planning. The preparations for the Passover, as narrated in Luke 22, verses 7 to 13, emphasize Jesus' divine foreknowledge and the meticulous planning that underscores this pivotal moment. Jesus instructs Peter and John, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They question where to make these preparations, and Jesus provides detailed instructions. Listen, he says, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house. He enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. This precise directive highlights Jesus' awareness of events and his control over the unfolding of his final days. The man carrying water jar, a task usually reserved for women, serves as a unique and unmistakable sign for the disciples, indicating the divine orchestration behind these events. This foreknowledge underscores Jesus' role as the orchestrator of salvation history, fulfilling the prophetic expectations surrounding the Messiah. Symbolism of the Upper Room The Upper Room, where the Passover meal is prepared, is laden with symbolic significance. It serves as the setting for the Last Supper, where Jesus will institute the Eucharist and it becomes a sacred space for His final teachings and acts with His disciples. The room's preparation, already furnished, symbolizes the readiness up for the new covenant that Jesus is about to establish. The meticulous preparation reflects the importance of this event in the divine plan of redemption. The act of seeking a place for the Passover meal also mirrors the Jewish tradition of meticulous preparations for Passover, where homes are cleansed of Laban and preparations are made to commemorate. Israel's deliverance from Egypt. 
This parallel in reinforces the continuity between the old covenant and the new covenant that Jesus will inaugurate. The Last Supper, Institution of the Eucharist The Last Supper, described in Luke 22 verses 14 to 20, marks the institution of the Eucharist, a sacrament central to Christian worship and identity. As Jesus and his disciples recline at the table, he says, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He then takes a cup, gives thanks, and shares it, saying, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He follows with the bread giving tax, breaking it, and giving it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he takes the cup again, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. These actions and words are foundational for the Christian practice of the Eucharist, where believers partake in the body and blood of, and blood of Christ in remembrance of his sacrificial death. Perpetual Memorial of Sacrifice the command to do this in remembrance of me establishes the Eucharist as a perpetual memorial of Jesus' sacrifice. This act of remembrance or anamnesis is not a mere recollection but a making present of the saving events of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. In the Eucharist, the past event of Christ's sacrifice is made present, allowing believers to participate in the redemptive act. The Eucharist also serves as a means of grace, sustaining and nourishing the spiritual life of believers. By partaking in the body and blood of Christ, believers are united with Jesus and with one another, forming the body of Christ, the Church. This sacrament reinforces the communal and sacrificial nature of Christian life, calling believers to live out the love and self-giving exemplified by Jesus. The New David Jesus as the fulfillment of Davidic promises. Jesus' actions during the Last Supper in his impending passion fulfilled the promises associated with David and established him as the new David. In the Old Testament, David is a central figure whose lineage is promised on the everlasting kingdom. Jesus, being a descendant of David, is seen as the fulfillment of this promise ushering a new era of divine kingship. In 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 to 16, God promises David that his offspring will establish a kingdom that will endure forever. Jesus fulfills this prophecy by establishing a spiritual kingdom through his death and resurrection. His entry into Jerusalem riding on a donkey echoes the humble kingship of David and fulfills uh, the Messianic prophecy of Zechariah 9 verse 9. Through these acts, Jesus redefines kingship, emphasizing servanthood and sacrifice over political power and military might. Leading a new exodus. Jesus' institution of the Eucharist during the Passover meal symbolically leads a new exodus. Just as Moses led the Israelite out of slavery in Egypt, Jesus leads humanity out of the bondage of sin through his sacrificial death. The Passover meal, commemorating Israel's deliverance, is transformed into the Eucharist, commemorating the ultimate deliverance through Jesus' sacrifice. This new exodus is not a physical journey, but a spiritual one, where believers are freed from the oppression of sin and death and brought into the promised land of eternal life. Jesus' death and resurrection mark the passage from death to life, from old covenant to new covenant, and from bondage to freedom. The Toda, sacrifice, and the Eucharist. The Eucharist also finds its roots in the Old Testament Toda, thanksgiving sacrifice. The Toda was a sacrifice offered in thanksgiving for deliverance from peril, often accompanied by a communal meal. In Jewish tradition, it was believed that in the Messianic age, all sacrifices would cease except the Toda. Jesus' last supper which institutes the Eucharist can be seen as the ultimate Toda's sacrifice 
He offers thanks, breaks the bread, and shares the cup, transforming the Passover meal into a new form of thanksgiving that commemorates and makes present His redemptive sacrifice. This act fulfills the prophetic expectation that the Toda sacrifice would continue in the Messianic age now embodied in the Eucharistic celebration. Establishing the New Covenant In declaring the cup as the New Covenant in my blood, Jesus establishes a New Covenant that fulfills and surpasses the Old Covenant with Israel. The New Covenant prophesied uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, verse 31-34, promises a deeper, more intimate relationship between God and His people, characterized by internal transformation and forgiveness of sins. The old covenant sealed by the blood of sacrificial animals is now replaced by the covenant sealed by the blood of Jesus. This shift from the old to the new signifies the completion of God's redemptive plan through Jesus' sacrificial death. The new covenant is universal extending God's promises to all humanity and inviting all to partake in the blessings of redemption. The significance of the Last Supper in Christian life, a call to unity and service. The Last Supper is not only a moment of profound theological significance, but also a call to unity and service within the Christian community. Jesus' act of washing the disciples' feet recorded in John 13, which occurs in the context of the Last Supper, exemplifies this call. By performing this humble service, Jesus provides a model for his followers to emulate. The Eucharist, as meal, underscores the unity of believers. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 to 17, emphasizes that sharing in the one bread and one cup unites believers into one body. This unity is not merely symbolic, but a, but a tangible expression of the communal nature of the church, where believers support and serve one another. The Eucharist as sustenance for the Christian journey. The Eucharist provides spiritual sustenance for Christian journey. Just as the Israelites were sustained by manna in the wilderness, believers are nourished by the body and blood of Christ. These sacraments strengthens believers to live out their faith in a world that often opposes the values of the gospel. The transformative power of the Eucharist is evident in its ability to draw believers closer to Christ and to one another. It empowers them to live lives of love, service, and sacrifice, reflecting the self-giving love of Jesus. The Eucharist is a source of grace that enables believers to persevere in their faith and to grow in holiness. The eschatological hope. The Last Supper also has eschatological dimensions pointing to the future fulfillment of God's kingdom. Jesus' words, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Luke 22 verse 18 point to the anticipation of the Messianic banquet. The Eucharist is a fourth state of this heavenly banquet where believers will, will share in the fullness of God's kingdom. Revelation 19 verse 9 describes the marriage supper of the Lamb where the, where the redeemed will celebrate with Christ in internal communion. The Eucharist, therefore, serves as a reminder of this future hope, encouraging believers to live in anticipation of Christ's return and the consummation of God's kingdom. Conclusion the Passover of the Last Supper are rich with theological and symbolic significance, encapsulating the core of Christian faith and practice. The meticulous preparations for the Passover highlight Jesus' divine foreknowledge and the symbolic act of man carrying a water jar leading to the upper room. The Last Supper, where Jesus institutes the Eucharist, establishes a perpetual memorial of his sacrificial death and a means of grace for believers. Jesus fulfills the role of the new David, leading a new exodus. Messianic fulfillment, grace as love, Christ's passion and resurrection. The Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus' agony and submission. In Luke 22, verses 39 to 46, we witness one of the most profound moments of Jesus' earthly ministry, his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
after the last supper, Jesus leads his disciples to this secluded place on the Mount of Olives. Here, he withdraws from his disciples, takes Peter, James, and John with him, and begins to pray. This thing is starkly contrasts with Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden, where Adam failed, Jesus stands firm in submission to God's will. Jesus' prayer reveals the depth of his agony and the weight of the impending crucifixion. He prays, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. Luke 22 verse 42 This prayer encapsulates Jesus' human vulnerability and divine obedience. The cup symbolizes the suffering and wrath he is about to endure on behalf of humanity. Despite the immense pressure indicated by sweat falling like drops of blood, Jesus submits to the Father's will, showcasing his sacrificial love and obedience. The contrast with Adam Adam's disobedience in Eden brought sin and death into the world, whereas Jesus' obedience and just money paves the way for redemption and eternal life. Adam's choice to eat the forbidden fruit was an act of defiance against God's command, resulting in the fall of humanity. In contrast, Jesus' choice to embrace the cross is an act of perfect obedience, reversing the curse brought by Adam's sin. This juxtaposition highlights the central theme of the New Testament. Jesus as the second Adam, who re rectifies the disobedience of the first. Through his prayer and testimony, Jesus demonstrates the essence of true discipleship, complete surrender to God's will, even in the face of suffering and death. His example calls believers to a similar path of obedience and trust in God's plan. Accusations and Crucifixion False Accusations and Injustice In Luke 23 verse 2, Jesus faced a series of false accusations before Pilate and Herod. The chief priests and the scribes accused him of misleading the nation, forbidding the payment of taxes to Caesar, and claiming, claiming to be Christ, a king. These accusations are strategic, designed to present Jesus as a political threat to Roman authority. Despite Pilate finding no guilt in him, the crowd demands his crucifixion influenced by religious leaders. Religious leaders. The injustice of Jesus' trial and the false accusations reflect the extent of human sinfulness and the brokenness of the world. Jesus, the innocent Lamb of God, is subjected to a mock trial and condemned to die a criminal's death. This injustice highlights the gravity of sin and the lengths to which God goes to redeem humanity. Jesus' silence endurance of these accusations fulfills the, the prophecy of Isaiah 53 verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. The Crucifixion and the Curse of Sin Jesus' crucifixion and the cal is the culmination of his earthly mission. As he is nailed to the cross, he takes upon himself the curse of sin that humanity inherited from Adam. The crown of thorns placed on his head symbolizes the curse that entered the world through Adam's disobedience. In Genesis 3, verses 17 to 18, God declares that the ground will produce thorns and thistles, and because of, because of Adam's sin, by wearing this crown, Jesus symbolically bears the consequences of that curse. On the cross, Jesus experiences physical agony, spiritual abandonment, and the weight of the world's sins. His cry, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27 verse 46 reflects the profound separation from the Father that He endures on behalf of humanity. This moment of forsakenness underscores the cost of redemption and the depths of Jesus' love for humanity. His sacrificial death fulfills the Old Testament prophecies and establishes the means for reconciliation between God and humanity. The Resurrection and the Empty Tomb the narrative of the empty tomb in Luke 24 verses 1 to 12 marks the turning point in the Christian story. On the first day of the week, or at early dawn, the women come to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. To their astonishment, 
they find the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. Two men in dazzling apparel appear to them, proclaiming, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Luke 24 verses 5 to 6 The empty tomb is the first sign of Jesus' victory over death. It validates his claims and the promises of scripture. The resurrection is not merely a resuscitation of a corpse, but a transformation into a glorified, immortal state. This event signifies the defeat of death in the inauguration of the new creation. The angelic announcement recalls Jesus' prediction of his death and resurrection, reinforcing the reliability of his word and the divine plan. Appearances to the Disciples Jesus' appearances to his disciples further confirm his resurrection. In Luke 24 verses 36 to 43, Jesus appears to the disciples, showing them his hand and feet and eating a piece of broiled fish to prove he is not a ghost. These appearances provide tangible evidence of his body resur bodily resurrection and help to dispel the disciples' doubts and fears. The resurrection appearances also serve to commission the disciples for their future mission. In the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, Jesus commands them to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything He has commanded. The resurrection empowers the disciples to carry out this mission, knowing that Jesus has conquered death and is with them always, even to the end of the ages. The Cornerstone of Christian Faith The resurrection is the cornerstone of Christian faith. Paul emphasizes its centrality in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14, stating, If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. The resurrection validates Jesus' identity as the Son of God, His victory over sin and death, and the hope of eternal life for believers. It is the foundation upon which the entire Christian message is built. The resurrection also signifies the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies and the establishment of the New Covenant. Jesus' triumph over death confirms God's faithfulness to His promises and the reality of the new life available through Christ. The resurrection assures believers of their future resurrection and the hope of eternal life in the presence of God. Conclusion Why did Jesus, Jesus die? The purpose of Jesus' death Jesus died to offer humanity the power of resurrection and eternal life. His death is the ultimate act of sacrificial love, providing atonement for sin and opening the way for reconciliation with God. By bearing the curse of sin, Jesus breaks the power of death and grants believers the promise of new life. His death is not the end, but the means to a new beginning marked by the hope of resurrection and eternal life. Invitation to join His Body Jesus' death invites us to join His Body, the Church, and participate in His redemptive work. As members of the Body of Christ, believers are called to live in the freedom and grace of His resurrection. This involves embodying the values, the values of the Kingdom of God, love, justice, mercy, and humility and participating in the mission to make disciples of all nations. Living in the freedom and grace of the resurrection Living in the freedom and grace of the resurrection means embracing a new identity as children of God, redeemed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. It involves a continual process of transformation, growing in holiness, and becoming more like Christ. This new life is characterized by hope, joy, and a confident assurance of God's presence and promises. The resurrection also calls believers to live with an eternal perspective, recognizing that this life is not the end, but a prelude to the eternal life to come. This hope sustains believers through trials and challenges, providing strength and courage to persevere in faith. United as one body with Christ As the body of Christ, believers are united in a profound spiritual bond. This unity transcends cultural, social, and ethnic boundaries, creating a diverse and inclusive community rooted in love and mutual support. 
the church as the body of Christ is called to be a visible sign of God's kingdom on earth, reflecting His love and grace to the world. In conclusion, Christ's passion and resurrection are the central events of the Christian faith, revealing the depth of God's love and the power of His redemptive plan. Jesus' obedience in Gethsemane, His sacrificial death on the cross, and His triumphant resurrection provide the foundation for salvation and the hope for eternal life. As believers, we are invited to join His body, live in the freedom and grace of His resurrection, and participate in His mission to bring healing and reconciliation to the world. Thank you for joining us in today's episode, Kingship and Sacrifice, the Climax of Messianic Fulfillment. We explored the profound themes of His royal identity, His role as the Lamb of God, and the significance of His passion and resurrection. Through his kingship and ultimate sacrifice, we see how Jesus fulfilled the ancient prophecies and opened the door to redemption for all humanity. In our next episode, The Church's Birth and Early Mission, we will delve into the early days of the Church, beginning with Apostles' Transformation at Pentecost and their bold witness to the resurrection. Don't miss this exploration of how the early Christian community was empowered by the Holy Spirit to spread the gospel far beyond Jerusalem. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated on all our future episodes. See you next time.